Hello, everybody, and welcome to this bonus episode of Magically Cruising, the cruise podcast where we share our personal cruise tips and hints to help you make the most of your next cruise. This is the first of our bonus episodes just because after making a whole podcast dedicated to the P&O drinks packages, the week after we launched it, they changed them. <laughs> so what we thought we'd do is we'd just do a little short mini episode just bringing you up to date with some of the new, some of the changes that have come from that drinks package. So as you know, I'm here an independent travel agent specializing in cruise, and I'm joined by my fellow drinks package expert, Sarah from Cruise and Parole. Do you want to say hello? Hi, so I'm Sarah from Cruise and Parole, where we share loads of information on cruise drinks packages so yeah so sarah i haven't followed this just because it happened quite quickly and i've been a bit busy the last couple of weeks but yeah can you sum up briefly what has changed about the pno drinks package and then we can maybe do a bit of a deeper dive into it yep okay so basically they've introduced another level so the prices have all shuffled up slightly kids still get the free refresh package they've changed the name of that it used to be the fizzy package um, but they've now introduced a deluxe drinks package. Oh, so what's so this is because this was one of my complaints, wasn't it? Last time about it was yeah, as much as it's great that they've got a drinks package, that it doesn't include a lot of the premium or signature drinks that I would usually head towards. So does this now include more options, I guess, for those signature premium drinks? Well, you need to get your hands on the menu. So basically, what this means now is we need to go to Piano Cruise to get the menus. And we've already <laughs> had someone email me and say, Have you not got our menu yet? Um, because it's quite woolly where so let me start by breaking down the package. So you've got the deluxe mm. drinks package. If you book it before the holiday, it's forty nine forty five. On board it's fifty four ninety five per person per day. The classic is forty four forty five, but on board it'll be forty four ninety five. So I think it was thirty what was it for? Yeah. Thirty like, eight? It was in the thirty something, it was like thirty eight, yeah. thirty nine, something like that. Yeah, so it's not actually gone up that much, a couple of pounds, um, if you bought before. Then you, then they've introduced an alcohol-free, which is twenty two forty five or twenty four ninety five. So that, um, that's if you don't want to have a drink, you're not drinking alcohol, yeah. you've got all your mocktails. And then you've got the refreshed drinks package, and that's nine eighty five or ten ninety five. So that's gone up a bit. You still get that free if you get the deluxe or classic package. But the difference is with the deluxe, there's certain beers and ciders that you don't get in the classic, so you will get them in the deluxe. Craft beers. Right, okay. So, so you've got some more upscale brands that you'll get, which I don't know whether you got them before. I think cause it was up to a certain price. There were certain things that you didn't get anyway. They're saying, I mean, the line is they've got an extended range of cocktails, Aperol Spit, Sunset Cooler. But obviously until you see the menu, um, but there are going to be more cocktails, which the, the cocktails were very limited. Uh, for me, where I'd see the biggest change is that you can get a large glass of wine now. With right. The, so yeah. you, you're getting double measures. So and you're getting an extended range of wines and an extended range of spirits. So you've got stuff like Grey Goose, the Salcom Gin, which is their signature gin, has gone into the into the top package. But you can get a double. So there is value in it. It's, it's a third Definitely, tenor. yeah. And that's like, what, two extra drinks, really, and you've got to justify two extra drinks. But then again, if you're a slightly more discerning drinker, which I do class myself as, um, it's, it's a no-brainer because you're going to have a lot more choice and you're going to get more of the type of drink you would actually enjoy as well. So <laughs> I know it's not for everyone, and we have this constant conversation, don't we, about the drinks packages, but it's not yeah. for everyone. But I think if you are somebody who enjoys premium drinks, and it sounds like a no-brainer to get it. It's, it's actually not much more expensive, and it's just, if you like a double, you can have a double. If you're a cocktail drinker, then you're probably better off with this because there's really not very many cocktails yeah. available. So another thing is that the cost of coffee and tea peaks. So you can only get a small, I think, now uh, in the classic package. But in the deluxe package, you can get your medium so that you've got more choice. You can get a bigger coffee or tea where I think you've got a bit less choice where it used to be everything before in the classic in the package now the classic package is selected small coffees and teas so if you want a big coffee then you've got to have the next package up so you can still get your pina coladas your mai tai stuff like that 170 ml of wine uh single spirit so it's just really just a bit of a premium upgrade no i think it's good to give people more choice as well though and i think it sounds like that's what this is obviously the cost has gone up and i think that's just a harsh reality we all have to accept with the cost of living crisis and the post-covid world that 
cruise isn't as cheap as it used to be but there is still definitely good value in there and i think it's nice to have that choice as well because i think when we did this full episode and i've not sailed with piano personally but when we were discussing the drinks package, I felt like it was too limited for the type of drink that I enjoy. Whereas from yeah. the sounds of it now, the new deluxe drinks package actually would include a lot more of the type of stuff that I would drink. So there is now actually a drinks package that I would be inclined to book. Whereas in the past, I probably would have been paying a la carte, which again, not that the drinks package is the be on an end all, but it would just be another reason to maybe look at alternative lines where I could get a drinks package that included the type of drinks that I would enjoy. So yeah. I think it's, it's a nice change actually to have more choice. And I think it's massively more expensive. I think that you've just got more options and if you if you want to spend a bit more than you can. So, you know, it's like when people, these when brands change things, there's a big furore in the Facebook groups. But I don't think it's all that bad. I think it's... No. Put it up, probably put it up less than anybody else. Like, I get it that people, obviously, if you're used to paying for something and you're used to having something a certain way, then I totally get it. Like, you know, nobody likes to pay more for things they used to have in the past. I mm. totally 100% get that. I just think people need to be very, very realistic of just the way the industry is going, unfortunately. And that is next year's cruises aren't going to be as cheap as this year's cruises. This is another sign of that, of this is them. It is increasing revenue, but it's because the cost of alcohol has gone up. The cost of yeah. everything has gone up. Operations, staffing, everything's gone up. You know, they're passing that cost on to you and this is how they're doing it. But they're giving you another another option to get more value out of that. So. So if people, when they're on board then, and they're trying to navigate how all this works, I know you've got some sample menus on your website, but what would they see once they're on board on the menus to kind of help them identify which drinks are included and which ones aren't? So when you look at the menu, you can actually see that you've got um, a C or a D for classic and deluxe. So I've got, um, in front of me, I've got, for example, let's have a look, um, Aperol Spritz and Sunset Cooler. So they are, they've got a D, so that means that they're under the deluxe package. It's actually very cool very clear so then you've got the favorite cocktails and it's got um they're all under the classic and the deluxe so it, it's actually separating what what you can and can't have so when you look at the spirit you've got all of your classic golden gin bacardi classic and deluxe but then when you've got the 50 mil it says d only so it is breaking it down it's actually really easy to understand and really comprehensive so we'll put that on the website or that is on the website and um, you'll be able to look at that and see and that will just make sense of understanding. It's actually very easy to understand. It's, it's a, I think it's a better system, better system. All. And I think it's again, so I have this conversation with a lot of customers when it comes around the drinks package. Some of them are like, we only like a couple of drinks. We're not big drinkers. So they feel like paying for the full package is always going to be a waste of money, but they will usually always spend more by the time they've had like their coffee or two a day they've had their glass of wine with dinner and maybe two or three cocktails in the evening I, I think you've got that choice you can go with a classic if you're just a, like a casual drinker you just like a glass of wine with a meal maybe you want your coffee um, and then maybe a cocktail or two by the pool or in the evening I think you can go with a classic but then if you're somebody who's a bit more discerning and you know you like the I, I'm, I'm like a magpie for signature cocktails if there's a signature cocktail on the menu I will run towards it like I know they've got a really good relationship with like golden tide rum and I think I'm going to be lethal with all the cocktails that feature kind of the rum on board, Avia especially. Yeah. Um, so I will be like a magpie. So I think I'm a deluxe person. Otherwise, I'm going to feel really like FOMO if I can't have all those cocktails I see on the menus. Yeah, definitely. And I think I'd be the same with the wine, actually. Just looking at where's the wine. Um, to be quite honest, you can have it. Oh, you just have a bigger measure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, I think it's how thing... do you want to spend your time? Spend your time drinking larger glasses or spend your time in line <laughs> waiting for another drink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no, no i don't think it's that bad i think it's okay um but what you get included in the classic package is is um alcohol free drinks and soft drinks beers and ciders uh your selected cocktails so your pina coladas your white tires there's quite a few selected 175 ml wines prosecco single spirits selected small costa coffees and tea pigs and if you've got kids with you, you get the complimentary refresh package, which is still active and which I think is brilliant per adult buying. So if you've got one adult, two kids, you're going to get one package. On right, okay, that makes sense. Deluxe package, you're going to get everything from the classic package, uh, plus some extra beer ciders, craft beers, extended range of cocktails, extended range of wines, but larger extended range of your spirit because and you're getting doubles perfect serves extended range of soft drinks and larger coffees 
So you'll get the mediums. And again, you'll get the complimentary refresh package. So probably much briefer than the last thing, but it's actually easier to understand it. So if you look at the menus, it's all really clearly broken down. So Well, yeah, no, really straightforward, really great. And thank you for sharing that, Sarah, because I haven't yet had a chance to get my head around it. And in that brief time we've chatted about it, I've actually got my head around it. It's really easy to understand. So yeah, cool. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Like I say, it's just going to be a little mini bonus episode, shorter than usual, just because we wanted to update you on kind of the new changes, at least anyway, to the PNR drinks menu. Um, as Sarah mentioned, there are some sample menus on their website, but they also have guides as well to all the different drinks packages as well. So it'll be linked in the description attached to the podcast or below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, but yeah, where is your website if the guys want to find more information on PNL, but also other cruise lines? So if you Google cruising with kids or cruising for all, we come up. So um, we're also on all social media under cruising for all or cruising with kids. Awesome. And then if you are interested in booking a PNL cruise, then you could definitely have a chat to myself. Um, we are available online under magical-traveler.com or you can find me on all social media under magical-trvlr. Other than that, guys, hope you found this episode useful and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.